The central nervous system comprises the brain and the spinal cord. It's responsible for issuing nerve impulses and the analysis of sensory data. It generates cognitive, that is thinking, processes using retained information from memory. Basic regions in the brain include the cerebral hemisphere, which is highly advanced in the human and is thought to be involved for our advanced intellect. Other regions include the midbrain diencephalon and spi uh, brainstem, which are involved in basic functions such as the regulation of breathing, heart rate, blood pressure, vomiting. The cerebellum near the back is involved in movement and the spinal cord roots down the back of the body inside the vertebrae from which nerves going to the tissues and coming back from the tissues are present. The brain is divided into lobes. The frontal lobe at the front is to do with decision making, problem solving and planning. The parietal lobes are concerned with the reception and processing of sensory information from the body. The temporal lobe is to do with memory, emotion, hearing and language and the occipital lobe at the back is concerned with vision. The peripheral nervous system is made up of the neurons that go from the spinal cord to the tissues known as motor neurons and those coming back known as sensory neurons. A neuron is a specialised cell which has an elongated process coming out of it known as an axon. This axon has a myelin sheath around it which is like an insulating material which prevents it from reacting with the next neuron which may be lying alongside it. They can conduct messages by electrochemical means to the central nervous system and from the central nervous system directly to the organs and muscles. A reflex is a stereotypical, that is recognisable and very similar in appearance, involuntary reaction of the organism on stimulation of receptors. For example, just knocking under the knee makes the foot jerk upwards. Or holding a hot plate, you might want to drop it quickly if it's burning your fingers. This happens quickly through a reflex arc in the peripheral nervous system at the level of the spinal cord. However, the central nervous system can exercise control over the reflex, going back to that plate again, holding the plate and you think, right, this is hot, I don't want to drop it. You can exercise control over that and hold it for a certain period of time before placing it down. Sensory threshold is the minimum strength of the stimulus to be perceived. If I speak very quietly or if you turn the volume down you can't hear the stimulus. The sensory threshold has changed. Habituation is a process where receptors may display a diminished response to continuous or repetitive stimulations. Typically the stimulations need to be non-harmful. For example, the ticking of a clock in a room or putting on a new shirt and tie which is a bit tight or slightly uncomfortable around the neck to start with. Over a period of time you don't hear the ticking of the clock in the room and the tie and the shirt seem comfortable around your neck. The autonomic, or you can think automatic, vegetative, an old term, nervous system manages the glands in the body and the involuntary muscles of internal organs and blood vessels. It has connections with the central nervous system, but we're not conscious of it working and generally we cannot control it. It's a biological control system which is neurohormonal and highly self-regulating in normal circumstances or environments. It regulates breathing, gastrointestinal motions, sweating, arterial blood pressure and body temperature, for example. In stress reactions, it can be activated as part of the general adaptation syndrome. 